Hey folks, welcome to the Valley of Fire. And today on this episode of The Smoking Tire, I'm gonna tell you why I think the McLaren Artura is the best McLaren of all time and the one I would rather drive every day than any Ferrari or almost any Porsche. Now, this is a very important car. Uh, it's not McLaren's first hybrid, that would be the P1, but it is its first uh, series production hybrid meant to replace the entire sports series line uh, eventually. For now, they still do build the GT, the last car on that sports series line. In this video, not only am I gonna tell you why this is my favorite McLaren I think I may have ever driven, but also how it compares to the Ferrari 296, the most similarly equipped hybrid competitor, although it's a lot more expensive, how it compares to the highest end Porsches, and why McLaren has won the interface wars. One of the smartest people in automotive aftermarket is our old friend Gail Banks, and he is sponsoring this video with their new product, the Pedal Monster. When you get an ECU tune on your car, some of that is the car actually making more power? But a lot of it is just reprogramming the throttle to deliver the power you already have in a better, sportier way. The Pedal Monster is the only pedal controller that goes through your OBD2 port, allowing you full control of your pedal response. It's got multiple settings for city, sport, and track, 10 settings between those, allowing you to customize your pedal response on the fly. And we're gonna show it to you in the dullest car imaginable, a 46,000 mile rental charger. Here's the stock setting, which gives you a big jolt of throttle as soon as you touch it, and then it totally dies out, right? So it feels like the throttle gets less sensitive the further you get into the pedal. Right, let's test the city program. And so you can see on the app how much pressure you're putting on the pedal and then how much throttle the bank's setting is actually giving right. the engine. Right, so reality. Red is reality. That felt a little more responsive, but I wanna try it in sport. The sport setting is totally different. The sport setting really does give me like a lot more throttle sooner, right? Like it's really, the this response is a lot more immediate. Wow. Now I'm gonna go to the track one, the most aggressive setting. And now it's like a real linear pedal. So it really sharpens the response. That's really cool. Compared to the stock one, the stock one feels like dead as a doornail compared to this. <laughs> if it works that well in a boring, dull-ass rental charger, imagine how well it could work in a turbocharged sporty car or a diesel truck. In fact, turbo cars are particularly adept for this. It's got a special patented feature, returning your throttle response to stock when you put the car in reverse. And if you don't want it to be too touchy at low speeds, you can set a speed threshold so it doesn't increase sensitivity below 10 miles an hour. There are applications for hundreds of cars and trucks, and you can go to bankspower.com to see if there's an application yet for yours. Use code the smoking tire at checkout to get 10% off your pedal monster from Banks Power, and thanks to Banks for sponsoring today's video. Let's start with the basics. There is an all new carbon tub that allows McLaren to build what might be the lightest hybrid supercar uh, yet. It is 3,300 pounds wet and it's carrying a gasoline engine, a twin turbo V6 at 120 degree angle, just like the Ferrari 296. But it's also carrying a 7.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, powering a very small, lightweight and compact compact electric motor that makes 94 horsepower and 166 pound-feet of torque. It's used uh, to drive the car in electric mode. It can go uh, 11, 15 miles at up to 81 miles an hour in a true electric mode. And it actually drives the car through the gearbox or it can be used as a torque filler in the more sporty driving modes. There's also a hybrid mode where it goes back and forth as needed. It's very, very cool stuff. The motor itself weighs 34 pounds, which is half of the P1's electric motor. And with 33% 
better density. That's how far we've come in 10 years. Uh, the gas engine is an incredibly compact design with a hot V turbo. When you see it on a stand, you can't believe how much power it makes for how small it is. Um, it's, it's small, it's light, it's very compact. And the fact that this vehicle uh, uses, uh, it's got an eight speed gearbox, but it only uses the electric motor to go in reverse. It doesn't have a traditional reverse gear. That allows you to build an eight speed gearbox in the size, shape, and weight of a seven speed gearbox. It's very interesting. The new carbon monocoque, super light and is designed uh, to optimize not only uh, ingress and egress, but also the shape and weight and placement of the big battery pack. And speaking of that battery pack, one very cool thing about it, besides powering the car and filling torque, is that it can charge the 12 volt battery because this car also has a normal 12 volt lithium ion battery to start the engine and if that battery starts to die this battery pack can fill it back up you can also use the charge port as a battery tender uh, there's a lot of facts and figures i've written down here but some of the most important ones are that it's McLaren's first ever electronic differential, uh, which can help maneuver the car in tight handling, but also add stability. They are still using hydraulic steering for better feel, albeit driven by an electro hydraulic pump. And they are using mechanical braking, meaning it's not brake by wire. Right? Right. We'll talk about the rest as we go. So we'll put it in drive. Oh, modes. There are many, electric, comfort, sport, and track. Also, sport, comfort, and track for the uh, uh, chassis, which is adjustable. They've moved the controls up here so you can reach them from the steering wheel. In fact, you can reach every control from the steering wheel, but there are no buttons on the steering wheel. McLaren wins, Ferrari loses. Real buttons that you can toggle. Real levers for the blinker and the wiper. Real uh, levers for the cruise control and all that stuff. And all accessible from the wheel, but not on the wheel. Brilliant. We will go into sport mode and the gas engine fires up comfort mode in the chassis because that is the perfect recipe for the canyons the valley of fire and we're off both mclaren and ferrari have figured out how to make a v6 engine sound good and i think the answer is 120 degree v hot turbos low intakes and short exhausts and then put the whole thing behind the driver. Both these engines are quite pleasant. This car feels super light, super light. Immediately, I love the visibility, such good visibility. I love the comfort and the driving position. I'm six foot three, I'm 270 pounds, and I have plenty of space, plenty of headroom, even room for a helmet up here, plenty of shoulder room, plenty of leg room, get some turbo whooshing going. Oh, Habibi, big number there. And it's not slow, okay? It's not as quick as the 720, nor should it be. It's a little over half the price. And frankly, it's not quite as quick as the Ferrari 296 either. But as tested, the Ferrari 296 that I drove is almost $200,000 more than this thing. The Ferrari 296, I've done the math, is give or take about 4.5 pounds per horsepower. This is about 4.9. So it's not quite as good power to weight, but you have to understand, power to weight in the fours is exceptional. This thing is really fast. It's also, really really smooth the ride is really good the new monocoque uh, architecture is very rigid allowing them to make the shocks themselves quite soft and supple and there's a new multi-link rear suspension which is designed to improve ride quality but also to improve traction on the launch which on our next uh, straightaway we should do the launch frankly i don't know this road very well so 
I can't go as quick as I might go if I was in uh, my local roads. But let's go up to track, handling mode, changing to track. Uh, this mode going to track, ESC dynamic. We're going to left foot brake, build, boost, and charge, and go. Still fights for traction. Zero to 60, three flat, not bad for a rear drive car. Quarter mile in the tens. I don't remember the exact number, but it's a 10 second car and it feels every bit of it. McLaren says 671 combined horsepower. Wouldn't be surprised if they're sandbagging a little bit. It's what they do. It's very stable in the uh, high speed sections. Even without a big wing, you've got those beautiful buttresses back there combined with the, um, the little gills, right? You've got the gills on the front. They, the air goes in the front, out the gills, around the side, into these big side scoops, right? And then out, it vents out the uh, engine compartment, which has a beautiful uh, laser cut aluminum grill. It sounds good outside the car too. You hear a little turbo whoosh, a little, uh, little vacuum cleaner kind of sound, but also a nice healthy growl. It'll probably sound even cooler with an aftermarket exhaust, but frankly, I find it to be very pleasant. The steering feel, perfect, they haven't messed that up. And the whole gauge pod and cluster moves when you adjust the steering wheel, so no matter where you put the wheel for your optimum driving position, the gauges and the controls, they come with you, so you never have to reach for anything. It's, it's quite good. Again, I love the visibility, the mirrors, the quarter windows. They make it very usable, easy to see around you, and these side curtains are up nice and high, so I can look to both sides and see what's coming. I don't feel like I'm in a hoodie, like in a Huracan. The new seats are very good. Have I mentioned it's really fast? Whoa! Big numbers, big numbers. Well, now I've got a little bit of heat in the tires. Let's try a launch again. I got some wheel spin on that last one. And let's see if now that there's some heat in the tires, if that happens again. Speaking of which, this uses the Pirelli Cyber Tire technology and nothing, nothing named Cyber has ever sounded cool, but it allows you to do more with your tires. For instance, you can set it for track pressures without getting a low tire pressure warning. It gives you temperature indicators for each tire as you warm up on a track day. Let's see if it sticks a little better with, uh, with a launch. Left foot brake. Why aren't you, uh, you not want to launch? I'm in track, track, manual, sport, track, Crash control on. You want to launch now? Doesn't want to launch. What have I done? Did I break it? Hmm. I have 90% battery. Let's go into sport mode rather than track mode. If you just roll into it, the grip is exceptional. Now there's a funny warning. It just said driver seat heater fault, which is odd because I haven't turned the seat heater on. Uh, that would be my concern. My concern is have they gotten, for lack of a better term, the McLaren-ness out of it? Because this is possibly the best daily driver, not possibly, this is the best daily driver car they've ever built, right? We could go down and we're gonna go past comfort to electric mode. There goes the motor. I can drive along 94 horsepower, 166 pounds of torque at up to 81 miles an hour for about 15 miles. Now, would I do this very often? No, but there are times when it comes in handy. If you're creeping through parking garages, 
if you're pulling in and out of your house late at night or early in the morning and you don't want to wake your spouse or your kids. Other McLarens are the wake up the family type. This is pretty mellow if you want it. I haven't experienced it personally, but I was told by some of our English folks that are here on this launch that they like going through little villages in the UK silently so they don't offend the locals with their brash supercarness. I get that. And the mode is here if you need it. Now we'll go back into sport. Engine comes on seamlessly and it remembers I wanted manual mode and we're off. The brake pedal feels like all other McLarens, right? It feels almost like they're going for a manual brake feel and you have to press it harder than you think. But the total package of this car is so shockingly complete. Um, they have come such a long way, you know, in 12 years since the 12C. The engine is so smooth. The ride is so smooth. The handling is so precise. The greenhouse is great. The seats and seating position are great. And now the integration of a hybrid system is brilliantly executed so that the weight penalty is minimized and in fact optimized for distribution. It's, oh, here we go. It really gets, it, do, it gets the best of that hybrid packaging. And they've even done great UI stuff. The CarPlay works great. The climate control is good. It's got this variable drift control, which hopefully I'll get to play with on the track. The nose lift is now just a button on the dash where before it was complicated. Uh, they've listened to their customers who use these cars and put lots of miles on them. And it's just, it's unbelievable. And so they've really done such a good job um, integrating hybridization without taking away um, the, the fundamental uh, dynamics of what you'd want out of a McLaren. I actually prefer this car to the Ferrari 296, not because of the speed. The Ferrari's quicker. Um, I like the steering on this. I like the brake feel on this. I like the seating position and the visibility on this. I like the fact that there's no haptic buttons and no buttons on the steering wheel. I can't believe I'm saying this, but McLaren makes the better UI. Uh, that's that's wild. Um, I like. I would rather drive this car every day than a Ferrari 296. And in fact, compared to the Porsche Turbos, um, which are which can overlap in price if you really option up a turbo or a GT3, slightly less usable than the Porsche, but way prettier, uh, way more unique and more exotic. Uh, there may be, I don't know what's up with the seat heater error code on this, but it definitely provides some differentiation as compared to a 911 Turbo, which is basically the same as a 911 base if you're going slowly. This feels very special and exotic, um, and is, they have done such an amazing job, especially considering um, it starts at a relative bargain of 223 or 33, $233,000. Um, base price. So it's far, it's $90,000 cheaper than the Ferrari 296 and is only slightly more expensive, maybe $30,000 more expensive than a base Porsche Turbo. And a Porsche Turbo S could easily be more than this in options um, by a lot. So bravo to McLaren. I mean, this is the most complete car they've ever made. Um, it rides almost as well as a 720. It goes really, really fast, even if a 720 is still faster. They're both faster than I can drive on the canyons and they're brilliant and it takes that, the size and the scale of the 570S and really brings it forward from a technological and a UI and a comfort perspective. And I think if I was to take any McLaren home and have to pay for it, um, this is the best value in the history of McLaren cars. So thank you to McLaren for having me out here in Vegas in the Valley of Fire. It's been a real treat. Thanks to you guys for watching and I'll see you later. And remember, 
always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.